Welcome to today's special meeting. Uh, pursuant to the provisions of section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that if you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Can, can everyone hear me? I, I hear yeah. we've got some audio now and that's gonna amplify our voices. Great. Well, the, the minutes, that was an erroneous part of that. Those minutes were actually for next week's meeting. The approval of the minutes is yes. for next week. <clears throat> All right, so today for our special meeting, we've got a number of uh, disciplinary and complaint issues that have been brought before the Commission. Uh, Mr. Fields uh, has prepared for us a uh, docket sheet, so to speak, of the various uh, complaints that are in front of us today. Um, I note that uh, for several of these complaints, okay. it appears that the um, TLC does not have jurisdiction over those complaints, and uh, I would like to address those on the front end. It might streamline things for us. Mr. Fields. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, Metro Legal had the one announcement they'd like to make uh, that just to share information with the commission. Yes. I, I just thought it would be relevant to go ahead and share with the commissioners. I believe you've already received a, a written or emailed copy of the mem memorandum and <coughs> final order. Um, in the um, Johnny Smith versus um, Sugar Creek Carriages case against the Transportation Licensing Commission, the, the appeal from the writ of certiorari of the, the discipline against um, that company. And um, I just wanted to give you all a little summary um, of what the court's decision um, and um, the case was ultimately decided on a procedural issue. Um, as you all may recall, there were actually um, two different results, I guess, that came out of that case. Initially, there was a six-month suspension of the, of the certificate holder, and then um, the commission came back the following month and with discussion with the um, a, attorney for the um, a certificate holder, um, revised that to um, a year-long probation. Um, with a condition that Mr. Smith himself not be present in the downtown area as a carrier. Um, and uh, the court based the decision on the fact that the, um, uh, the appeal was taken from the first decision and not from the second decision and dismissed it on that basis. But um, the court does go into the, um, in the alternative, goes into the substance and <coughs> merits of it um, and does determine that there is um, a basis for the commission's findings and um, the discipline that was applied and that it um, so basically upholds the commission's decision. Um, it does, it, they actually did go into the evidence a little bit specifically. Um, uh, they noted um, that there was some um, discourteous behavior on both sides, um, but said that the evidence in the record did demonstrate a pattern of behavior by Sugar Creek of disallowing Mr. Ba Mr. Bassett into the carriage queue, which demonstrated a disregard for public safety. So that was the basis for the court's upholding of your decision. And I thought sharing that in some detail was maybe helpful before we have this disciplinary proceeding go forward so that you can kind of have in mind the kind of thing that the court will um, uphold. Um, and um, also there is a footnote that um, uh, references um, the fact that in the past we have generally not had our witnesses sworn in um, and the court cited um, rule of evidence 603 for that um, 
We have not done that because in general, we have followed case law that provides that the rules of evidence actually don't apply in administrative hearings, but um, given the court's specific notation about it, we thought it would probably do no harm to begin instituting that, um, at least at these um, disciplinary <coughs> evidentiary hearings. And so we are going to do that to change our procedure to do that today. Are there any other questions about the, um, the court's ruling? I mean, I think we could do that, certainly. Um, I think you can also just do it. Just do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. But if we want to make it a consistent rule that the board follows, not just this board, the, the four of you that are here today, but something that we want the board to consistently follow procedurally in future, then I think that would be a good idea. And, and this is, the swearing in is only with respect to <coughs> addressing complaints before the commission? Um, so Tara and I did talk about that. Um, practically speaking, I mean, in theory, you could get appeals from any decision that you make by writ of cert. Um, uh, however, um, in general, the only people who are going to speak on other matters are going to be the person themselves. And I don't know if this makes sense, but like say, for example, you have um, an applicant for a permit for um, you know, to be a driver of a sedan or, you know, if, if they speak, they're going to speak on behalf of themselves, you know, and so it's very unlikely that there would ever be a need um, to kind of use their testimony against them or um, have other, other witnesses speak on those issues. That's really generally not going to happen except in the disciplinary hearing context. And so, um, your record on appeal, it's not going to, it's, it's just not going to be necessary because you're not going to be, you know, looking to hold that testimony against that person. So, um, for that practical reason, we think really it's only necessary um, in th this kind of disciplinary hearing that results in an appeal. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Ms. Gustonis. So, Mr. Fields, I know noticed here that there are a number of complaints that are based on um, Section 12.40.040 as opposed to 12.54.200 uh, or uh, related 12.54 sections. And it's, it's my understanding from our uh, legal counsel that the TLC does not have jurisdiction over addressing complaints that fall under 12.40? 12.40 is related to the Traffic and Parking Commission. Uh, the Commission, uh, the Transportation Licensing Commission, does not have authority to consider one way or the other whether <coughs> there was a violation. You know, and there's, of course, there's also the issue of some others that are in, within 1254 that I think you'll, for instance, the 1254-200-A11 talks observing and obeying all traffic laws and regulations. Uh, you know, it, it, there there have been some people who have said that uh, it, it, during meetings that unless there's a ticket issued or a police officer is actually observing it, that was there a violation of the law? That's that's a traffic issue. So if if there is, then you have a jurisdiction. If a ticket's present, if not, then maybe then it's, there's the thought that that it isn't appropriate. But but 1240 certainly is not something. Uh, that we have authority over. I, I placed it on the agenda only in an effort to make sure that it was clear that we it came to the commission, the commission considered it and said we don't have jurisdiction or proceed on a different direction if you choose. I'm looking at the, the docket sheet prepared and it looks like that the only complaint that would be wholly dismissed on the no jurisdiction grounds is the one that's brought by Robert Leval versus Southern Comfort. Is that correct? Well, if if you begin just looking at the at at, if, at the 1240s, there are actually 11 instances where there are 1240. There are issues of 12 in section 1240. There's one under Mr. Bassett has 
has three. Miss Cox has <coughs> has two. Um, Miss Doherty, I'm sorry, does not have any. Uh, Mr. Lavelle's are all 1240s, as you said. Uh, Miss Lancaster has one that would cl be classified that way. Uh, Miss Warren Zuniga has has three uh, that would fall under 1240. Well, let's um, just let's hear from Robert Lebel. Mr. Lebel? Do you want to go yes, ahead sir. and swear the witnesses in back? Yes. Yes, thank you for reminding me for that. Uh, because we're going to institute a swearing-in process, we're only going to do it once at the, at the beginning of our complaint process. Um, so all those intending to give testimony, if you'll please stand. And if you'll uh, repeat after me and raise your right hand. I swear or affirm. I swear or affirm. That the testimony that I'm about to give is the truth. That the testimony I'm about to give is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Um, Mr. Liebel, um, You've got a complaint here against Southern Comfort, and it's our determination that we, our commission does not have jurisdiction over your complaint. Okay. And so it, traffic and parking does have jurisdiction, um, at least that's our determination. So I would... They don't have disciplinary authority, but... I'm sorry? The traffic and parking commission doesn't have disciplinary authority, but... Those violations can be enforced by an MPD. Okay. So I would encourage you to file a complaint with the Metropolitan Police Department and they can enforce those laws against okay. uh, Southern Comfort. This complaint was made on uh, June 23rd. So it, is it still valid? The complaint against Southern Comfort? Your yes. complaint? Yeah, the one that I filed. Um, Would it still be valid? Valid? I I don't know the answer to the question. I I'm, I'm confident that the Metropolitan Police Department would have you complete their own uh, affidavit uh, setting out the the complaint. I don't, I don't know why it wouldn't still be a proper complaint to bring, even though it's September now. All right, thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I ask, um, a lot of this has to do with blocked crosswalks and, and so forth. Um, is that, uh, those, that's part of the clutter we've had at every one of these hearings, is it, Thank you. Um, <coughs> do I understand that complaints about um, blocking crosswalks are not within the jurisdiction. I'm not arguing or complaining, I'm just asking. Is that part of what you've ruled? What we've tried to do, and if, if, the, if our form complaint hasn't been changed yet, is we're trying to uh, require going forward that complainants list the various provision that they believe has been violated. Uh, so that we can make a determination on the front end whether our commission has jurisdiction. And with respect to Mr. Liebel's complaints, um, Mr. Fields' office determined that it fell under section 12.40 as opposed to 12.54. I think, I think uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, confusion was is that uh, in terms of the allegation by the complainant, Mr. Level, as to what has been violated, he did in fact put 12.40 and others. And his handwritten part, where he's explaining the factual allegations, he's talking about blocking the crosswalk. And I think if, if the commission would determine that it does not enforce rules having to do with blocking crosswalks, it would shorten a whole lot of these meetings.
don't actually have a copy of 1240 with me, but um, I mean, 1254-200-A11 does incorporate by reference uh, the, the obligation to obey all other traffic laws. However, um, it may be more a question of what's the appropriate forum in which to determine that those traffic laws were in fact violated. Is, is that the concern that um, like, like a court, like traffic right. court would be more the appropriate venue for that determination to be made and then if a traffic court violation were in fact made in that venue, then we would take that under consideration after that determination has been made under 1254 200 yeah, that my, After conversation with Metro Legal, uh, in fact extensive, I think the issue was could the commission find that someone was at fault of an ordinance they didn't have any authority over? And since we didn't have a we didn't have authority over 1240, and since a police officer or you know, we, we weren't involved in it one way or the other, so the question became that we didn't have authority over it at all. If there were a violation and a ticket were issued, a citation, an arrest was made, and a conviction followed or a determination that the, the, the ticket was a, was issued properly, then it could come back to the commission saying, you know, this company has 10 tickets and they all are blocking crosswalks and we believe this is a violation or this driver is in violation. But that's, that's kind of where we were after all the legal conversations. Chairman, the first complaint here by Mr. Bassett uh, starts with placing an allegation that a orange cone was placed uh, behind a carriage stand. Um, we don't know who placed it. There'll be some proof on that. We don't. It's not Sugar Creek Carriage's cone. But I, given this recommendation by Metro Legal that I don't quarrel with, I'm not sure how. Mr. Bassett's complaint is within your jurisdiction. Could I present the complaint before? Well, Not let's if there's let's, no jurisdiction. Let's finish addressing Mr. Liebel's complaint right. first, and then we'll go forward, Mr. Bassett. challenging parts of putting this particular agenda together was the sheer volume and how do we present them, uh, which is the reason I put together a, a, a docket. Each, in, in this particular case, all of these were directed on a single sheet from Mr. Uh, Lavelle toward Southern Comfort toward 1240 and all <coughs> 1240. Um, and so in this particular case, again, I did not want to just discard it out of hand because it, well, it was issued, but once we have guidance from the commission, assuming that the commission agrees that if it is not one of the ordinances, which we have several that you're responsible for, then we would not bring those, we, they would not enter on an agenda unless they had some sort of an impact on what you do have authority over. And I, I might interject one more time if that's okay. Um, so I, I think w we've been looking at the complaints on their faces and um, some of them do cite 1254-200-A11, and some of them don't. Um, so the ones that do are kind of shoehorning it into 1254, which is under your jurisdiction, and the ones who don't aren't. Um, if the complainants um, we, we might have just kind of from a procedural due process um, problem with that because um, if, if, the if the people who are the um, parties alleged to have committed the violation aren't on notice that they're alleged to have violated 1254, 200, A11 as well, then they haven't come here today prepared to defend themselves um, against that charge. But if you wanted to like defer those and allow them to amend their complaints, then if, if you wanted to allow them to, um, uh, to um, 
allege a violation of 1254-200-A11 um, uh, as well, um, if, if they choose to do so, of course, that's their choice, um, then that's another potential thing that you could do. So with Mr. Leval's complaint, he alleges that um, our carriages are, pro are provided shared parking with taxi cabs in front of Hard Rock Cafe between 1st and 2nd Avenue on Broadway. We can legally fit two carriages in this spot and remain within code compliance. goes on to, to write, Southern Comfort with Sugar Tree have as many as two additional carriages in this location, meaning that there are three to four carriages in this parking area, blocking the crosswalk, blocking pedestrians access to crosswalk, sometimes hindering vehicle traffic flow at corner of, of uh, First Avenue and Broadway. These actions give an unfair advantage to Southern Comfort Carriage Company and all others who break the law doing this. Carriage drivers at Sugar Creek Carriage Company are forbidden by owner from breaking any rules, codes, or ordinances. Doing so could mean immediate termination from Sugar Creek Carriage Company. Drivers at Sugar Creek are being harmed financially by Southern Comfort Carriage Company and all others who um, practice disregarding the codes, rules, and ordinances. Thank you. So we need to make a determination whether or not we have jurisdiction over this complaint, regardless of whether it is literally written as falling under 12.40 or 12.54. And if we decide we do have jurisdiction, then we can decide if there's been a violation. of Mr. Liebel's complaint does seem to be, as Mr. Blackburn uh, noted, involving blocking the crosswalk. And hindering traffic flow. Yes, I, I mean, I would like to know what that language is versus 1254, which 1254 seems to focus on obeying traffic laws and regulations. Right. Um, so 1254 is obviously the chapter that addresses the horse-drawn carriages. And um, so that incorporates the, um, the provisions, and, and we've talked specifically about 1254-200, which is um, a driver permit compliance provision. Um, and it incorporates by reference um, other laws, traffic laws and regulations that drivers are generally required by general law to obey. And 1240 would be one of those other laws. I'm just saying on the complaint where the complainant hasn't actually alleged a violation of, of 1254, um, 
that would arguably be beyond your jurisdiction unless that complainant would like to amend their complaint, which, like I said, just in terms of giving the respondent fair notice of the kind of new, new violation alleged against them, if they want to do that, I feel like we should defer those rather than hearing them today. But, um, sorry, <laughs> sorry, just lost what I was going to read to you. 1240.040 is a provision about stopping, standing, or parking prohibited locations. And A says, except when necessary to avoid conflict with other traffic or in compliance with regulation or of the directions of a police officer or official traffic control device. No person shall stop, stand, or park a vehicle. Um, and then it lists various locations. Probably one of the ones that's most relevant is E on a crosswalk. Um, but there are others that may be relevant in various of the complaints. Do you think I need to read through all of them, Dylan? Do you remember which ones are more specifically? I think the crosswalk were the biggest ones. The crosswalk was the biggest one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's section E. Um, and, but it's also, do you know if there were any other sections? Yeah. I'm going to let Sarah read it. <laughs> I was just going to point out that um, the way it's the way it sticks out in the end, it says that if you are caught in violation, you can be towed. on par with um, general traffic regulations and to me it's more consistent with um, maybe making making a ride on red or something more akin to that. Um, the only piece of it that I would just um, add as far as the interpretation is the safety aspect of blocking a crosswalk. Chairman, on this particular one, I didn't prepare this uh, or try to compare the facts alleged to the ordinance because I only saw it after it had been filed. I just spoke to Mr. Level, and he is uh, he is fine with withdraw withdrawing this today. Uh, and if he wants to present it in some other way, I can give him some assistance in preparing it. I would suggest that our lives would all of us be easier if you just didn't do crosswalk cases. <laughs> I think that would help in a whole lot of things uh, because so many of these since I've been appearing here have been crosswalk cases. Uh, and the ordinance refers to vehicles. It was pointed out about having vehicles towed. I can't imagine they really contemplate a carriage being a vehicle, although technically it may be. But with, with the time they did wrote that and uh, I think we could have 15 crosswalk citations every single month that you meet if, if those are going to be heard. So again, from a, from a staff standpoint, I, I think the concern that, that I had, and, and certainly I don't speak for Metro Legal, and, I, and I'm not an attorney, it, it does strike me that expertise is important on certain things. If a police officer issues a ticket, and that ticket is taken, uh, issued a citation, that citation goes into court, a judge determines that there's a violation. That makes it pretty simple for the commission to be able to say, yeah, there's a violation. Uh, historically, the commission, when one of our inspectors writes a citation, one of the things I typically won't do, unless it's a public safety issue directly, I won't bring that particular case, even though it, uh, we could, I won't bring that back to the commission until after it's adjudicated through the court system. Uh, in fact, we've got some right now that uh, by, by authority, the commission has authority to deal with it, but by, from my perspective, common sense, it makes better sense to see what the courts do with it. And even if the court dismisses it, it doesn't, it doesn't reduce the, commi the, the uh, commission's authority. It just simply uh, is a different thing. It's a, something else for you to consider. So from the, from the 1240s and other things that aren't clearly authority of the commission, I was concerned about finding a violation without um, without it without the police involvement or or uh, along those lines again that that may be thinking out not you know 
that may not be the appropriate thinking, but that's that's where I was to get us to this point. And, I mean, I would say it may be, I'm going to explain more to the weight of the evidence because um, uh, the, <coughs> like, obviously, as Billy suggests, you know, if something was, um, if, if your complaining witness was a police officer or if you had something that had actually already been adjudicated in traffic court and um, a, a, a violation found um, to have occurred, um, that's obviously very strong evidence of a violation of other traffic laws that would also be incorporated by reference into this commission's jurisdiction under 1254A11, 1254-200A11. Um, however, um, you know, I, I mean, certainly, I believe that we have had discipline issued on allegations of 1254-200A11 um, violations in the past with horse-drawn carriages even. Um, uh, where the complaining witness was, for example, one of the inspectors. Um, and, um, you know, so in that case, if the complaining witness was one of the inspectors, um, you know, uh, the commission, I think, might reasonably conclude that that person maybe has a level of expertise in observing the violation um, that maybe a lay person does not. Um, and so um, uh, I think you can consider them if you want to, as long as a violation of 1254-200-A11 is asserted, or you can let them defer and amend the petition and, um, and <coughs> newly assert it, but it wouldn't be today. Or if he chooses to withdraw it, I think that's fine too, then you don't have to deal with it. So it's, it's at your discretion. Well, I certainly think it makes sense that if a complaint is brought before the commission that it clearly states the jurisdictional basis uh, for us to be making a consideration of it um, for simplicity purposes also just to ensure that we are um, ensuring that we do in fact have jurisdiction over it uh, without just jumping into the merits. Um, since Mr. Uh, Mr. Liebel could you come back forward? Yes. I, I, I didn't want to have Mr. Blackburn speak for you, so it's, okay. it's my understanding that you would like to withdraw your complaint and perhaps refile it? Yes, that's correct. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So we'll consider your complaint withdrawn. Um, so for purposes of... Uh, of just the record will um, treat your complaint as uh, voluntarily dismissed. Thank you. Um, so we'll now address Mr. Bassett's complaint against uh, Sugar Creek Carriages. I have to get this set up. I filed my complaints after reading complaints of a similar nature against Southern Comfort. And uh, my basic intent, uh, I don't really want to see a particular driver get suspended or on probation, but the general flow is that they're kind of hypocritical and frivolous complaints in that I'm going to demonstrate they do exactly what they're filing complaints against us about. <coughs> so. I'm going to tell you the first part, and I wasn't really intending to file a complaint on this. It happened June 30th. You can see that Deborah Cox was parked just inside on the left hand lane. It's kind of blurry there, but it's not up here. Oh. Is it up yet? No. It's not connected. 
I'm at a loss here. Um, how do I get to the screen? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Yeah. Less expertise than anybody here. This laptop is also plugged in. And It's up now. Now, Mr. Mr. Bassett, I do want to uh, inform you and, and all the others who are planning to speak today. I'd like to address the complaint that you filed against um, Sugar Creek characters, specifically Mr. Level and Miss D. Cox. That's the one I'm doing. Okay, and so I'm going to give you three minutes to present your case against That's all them. I need. All right. On this one, you can see me pulling into the carriage stand. Come on, cut the volume. But you can see Miss Cox parked on the inside left, and that's just kind of blurry. I'm going to jump ahead to where, let me back up there. <coughs> this is where I'm following Mr. Leval, according to the plane crew, it's loading passengers which I have no problem with. And then she cuts off in front of me, although I'm behind Mr. Laval, and continues to cross the street in what seems like less than a safe condition as she's running the red light to get parked there. Now, again, that results in the staging and the cutting off and Shortly after, I'm coming back around, and Mr. Laval is once again staging and picking up a ride in the Riverfront Loop, which this was on June 30th. Now, I probably wouldn't have thought a lot about filing these complaints, even with the cutting me off, but several days later, I happened to uh, witness this. and found out that there was a problem. As soon as I can get the volume up.
So that's what inspired me to file those complaints. So, and honestly, I have no problem if Mr. LeBall or Miss Cox or anyone pick up rides to carriage stand, whether they park at Sabaros, but to file complaints eight days uh, and, and stand up there and talk about it eight days after they've done it themselves. I mean, where is this newfound lust for safety? All right, well, thank you, Mr. Bassett. All right, are we, we're not going to my next one yet. That's then. correct. All right. <coughs> Mr. Chair, one of the things I wanted to make sure we bring out to the commission, again, today may, um, there are actually things on the agenda I had additional comments on in terms of jurisdiction and so forth. There have been so many, and there have been so many charges and counter charges and, and, and allegations of favoritism and everything else that we basically wanted to give you everything that we had involving these particular situations. Of the, of Mr. Bassett filed six complaints. Three are against uh, Sugar <coughs> Creek, and then three are against drivers. 1254-200 does not uh, is not a section that you can hold a company responsible for. Uh, you can't hold because it's a driver section. So what it amounts to is if you do have jurisdiction over everything in 1254-200, but now that he's presented information, I think what you're going to have to consider is did the drivers violate 1254-200, uh, observe and obey, or A11 I think are going to be the issues, and maybe A1 as well, act in a reasonable and prudent and courteous manner and also observe and obey all traffic laws and regulations. So as the discussion goes forward, again, focusing on the drivers, when it's 1254-200 is gonna be the critical part. And I, again, I think legal would agree. I, I would agree. Um, there is a provision in 1254-070-A2 that says that a certificate holder um, can be disciplined if it is determined that the certificate holder or any driver operating on behalf of the certificate holder has failed to comply with provisions of this chapter. However, once again, if we're looking at the face of the complaint, that violation wasn't cited. So if, if they, Article 2 um, talks about driver's permits and 1254-200 is under Article 2. So that is really a violation that can only be found and that can only be disciplined against a driver. And I do believe had I out of hand or just dismissed without sharing with the commission, there would be additional comments about what we're, are we favoring one versus the other? But the truth of the matter is, I think that's true. Of, I think you're gonna find this on almost all the complaints. There's gonna be something against a company that may be filed inappropriately or inaccurately uh, for the team. So the first three on the list from Mr. Bassett that lists Sugar Creek carriages, mm -hmm. because it's 1254-200, we won't be considering those today? They could refile under 1254? I don't, I, I don't think you can find Sugar Creek carriages guilty as a certificate holder guilty of a violation of 1254-200 because that's a driver permit violation. Okay. I, I, and I think if you look at the three complaints <coughs> at the top with the companies and then look at the three complaints at the bottom with the drivers, for the most part, they're going to be the, they're going to be the same, the same incident, just with the drivers charged and with the companies charged. Yeah, there's just one that's listed at seven, uh, July 29th for sure against Sugar Creek, mm -hmm. and I think the all the others were on the 30th. Uh, the yeah. drivers were all on June 30th. Right. right. Okay. What Mr. Bassett just presented was his individual complaints against Robert Lebel and Deborah, Deborah Cox, Cox on June okay. 30. Gotcha. Right. Thank and you. I, and I know it's confusing, but we prepared this about three times, trying to make sure we would gotten everything that was covered. So it's uh, certainly been a challenge to 55 violations and 22 complaints. Um, yeah, we, ha we have one procedural suggestion, which is entirely up to the um, the respondent and their counsel, um, which is if the respondent and their counsel um, kind of wants to waive their notice obligation under procedural due process and allow the complaint to proceed under 1254 070 a 2 even though that wasn't alleged, um, 
if, if they were willing to do that, we could go ahead and proceed. You could go ahead and proceed to consider it. We have to respectfully decline to do that. All right, Mr. Blackburn, do you want to address um, the complaints against Mr. Uh, is it Lebel? Yes. And uh, Ms. Cox that Mr. Bassett just put on? Are we proceeding with those? Yes. I, um, I was trying to look at this. I'm trying to determine what among his allegations this video was supposed to demonstrate. I don't. <coughs> was it that he was cutting someone off? Is that what you were trying to say? Oh, one of Sugar Creek's drivers, Miss Cox, pulled out from a parked position with an empty carriage and Tom was specifically to get to the carriage. <coughs> That's a lie. I said, shut it. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bassett, we're going to play the commission some video here. If we get to it, showing you doing the precise same thing. Isn't it true that all of these drivers go through that roundabout and stop? Sort there of queue no up. Protocol. As I've seen. Is it true that they go through there and stop, including you, including others? You asking me what the law is there? Never ask you that, did I? I ask you whether it's not, is it not true that the carriage drivers use this roundabout, we're calling it, that's right at the end of First Avenue. Correct. I mean, uh, uh, Broadway into First Avenue, right? Correct. All right. And so they travel around there because they're circling around to go to the carriage stand, which is in front of the Hard Rock Cafe. That would be. I would imagine. You imagine? You've done well, it hundreds of times. Ask a direct question. What do you want? To, I don't believe the witness is going to answer the question. Lines? Have you circled around there, queued up to go into the uh, carriage stand in front of the Hard Rock Cafe? That's pretty direct, Mr. Yes. Bassett. Okay. So you're complaining about Mr. Level or Ms. Cox or other people doing the same thing. No, I'm complaining about it because there were complaints about us doing it. I'm right. trying to show the frivolousness so of you, so this you, whole operation. So you file these complaints in retaliation for complaints being filed against you? To respond to the complaints. Because they were filed, complaints you never had any intention of filing. There was no filing. complaint filed against me for parking in the roundabout. I'm not sure, Mr. Chairman, what we're defending here. You're talking about cutting off someone like you do in traffic? That's uh, exactly what happened. I, uh, there's no evidence of that. This is 8th Southern Comfort Carriage. There is no room in the stand over. Well, if I understand Mr. Bassett correctly, he's uh, alleging that picking, parking and picking up passengers in the roundabout is a violation of 1254-200 and that Ms. Cox's cutting him off as he was going around the roundabout was not acting in a reasonable, prudent, and courteous manner. This um, video that, so far as I could see it, did not demonstrate any passengers being dropped or picked up. Did you intend for it to? Where? I can't ask you where. No, where are you asking me did I pick up or drop off passengers? No, no, no. Are you asking no. me that I do it in a roundabout? No, I haven't I asked it? anything about you. That day will come. What I asked you was, I didn't see on the video you played for the commissioners uh, any picking up or dropping off of passengers. Are you saying that this video demonstrated <coughs> that? I'm saying my video demonstrated Mr. Hall picking up passengers. Picking up passengers, where? Dropping off passengers, staging, whatever the phrase is Mr. Smith uses. What was the day of that? That was 6.30. March the 30th. No, I mean, 6th uh, is June. Well, you're very right about that. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. And you filed this on the 13th of August, was it? Or the 28th no. of July? It would have been within the 30-day incident period. Now, wait a minute. 
It was the, you said the, exactly the what date? Did I file the incident occur? No, did the incident occur? 6.30. 6.30? You sure about that? Well, let me get my file. It was, if we're gonna fight about the date, let me I, get my I have file. the complaint in front of me. It, it, the date time incident was alleged to be June 30 and it was filed on July 28. All right, so apparently I was correct the first three times so I didn't cheat you. <laughs> How many of these carriage operators would you conservatively estimate to do exactly what your videos have been showing? Including your own. I would estimate exactly how many people park here illegally, how many people park here. Be a little more specific. I realize you're trying to ask me abstract questions. What is the exact question? You ready? You listening? Okay. How many carriage operators would you estimate on a weekend basis circle around the uh, what we've called a roundabout and queue up there in order to access the carriage stand? 50%. 50%, including Russell Bassett. No, I always use either the correct left turn lane or go around the roundabout. I do not go up the right hand lane and turn left as many of Sugar Creek drivers do, and I'll be glad to show you that evidence. Are you alleging an illegal left hand turn, uh, Mr. Level? At times, yes. No, I mean on this time. I mean on this time. Not on this time, or it would okay. have been in the complaint. All right. So what you're alleging is, is that he pulled in front of your carriage. No, I allege that she pulled in front of my she carriage. She pulled in front of your carriage, and he was in, in the roundabout. Me, he had turned around, signaled one minute because people were loading. As I said before, I have no problem where anybody gets a ride. It didn't cost me even three seconds. But to then be cut off while I'm waiting for him to load, that is the complaint I am alleging. All right. Ms. Cox? From what I saw in the video, I was parked on the left-hand side waiting on the carriage to leave the carriage stand, but I did not cut him off. If you're, what I saw in his video was him and me were side by side, and I was in the line behind Mr. Level and he was on my right. Uh, I'm allowed what I ask, saw in the video. I'm allowed to ask questions of her, correct? Um, not right now. Let's let right. Mr. Blackburn finish. All right. I believe that's the only thing that she was charged with. The video, what the video, the video was taken from behind and, her and carriage. Off to the right. He so was behind and off to the right of me. He was behind. All right, and so you, did you took this from your carriage? I did. All right, so she had to be in front of you for you to have taken this video. If she was parked to the left, I pulled around in the lane of traffic behind Mr. Leibov. Her carriage was empty. She was sitting there when I pulled in. She wasn't moving with the traffic. I did. When I was behind him and he signaled, wait a minute, or whatever that signal meant, as he loaded, I was fine with it. And then as the light went green and I stepped forward, she commanded her horse to step out. You heard me say, that's not safe. I pulled to the right and I sat there and watched her run the red light in the double formation as the video showed to get to the carriage stand. Didn't you tell us that you were uh, complaining because she cut you off when the light turned green? That the light, she cut me off while I was in motion, the light was already green. Was she in motion? Not at that time. How did she cut you off? <laughs> By saying, come on, and her horse mule stepped out since I was arched into the turn and she was cutting in at an angle. How fast would you say you were traveling? Uh, the approximate three miles an hour that a horse walks. And she was going three miles an hour? Possibly. But you felt you were in danger? Uh, when a horse's head is close to another horse's head, as they have said many times, horses react differently. It was an unsafe maneuver. Her carriage was 
empty, I had passengers. At which point do you weigh the safety of passengers over the urgency to get up to that carriage stand? What cuts you off? The horse, the mule, the driver. So the horse, not the carriage. Well, <coughs> now you kind of got to put the horse before the cart, and that's what happened. So it was the horse. Now, I could have kept going forward, and horses would have met. Just, I don't want to belabor this, Mr. Bassett. If you want to have an argument, you're going to lose it. So let's just stick with what we're doing here today, all right? Now, what I want to do is let you show me here exactly how you say this happened. You are on the right side. She's on the left side. Are you pretty much... Well, would you uh, like me to draw out? No, I'd like you to listen and answer. So you're, uh, you start to move at a slow rate of speed, she starts to move at a slow rate of speed. After right? I started. All right. The video that you showed us shows, does it show the back of her carriage? On the way in, <coughs> she was parked still. That was to show that she was parked there empty. She did not move with any traffic until I was abreast. Do you remember the subject? We're talking about cutting you off. That's what you alleged. All right. That's all I want to talk about. Cutting you off. I didn't move the traffic because I was waiting on the light to change and the line of traffic to move. When she started off and you started out, you were essentially the side by side? Uh, I was just a short distance ahead. By ahead. Foot maybe. So you're saying she cut you off while you were ahead? She had to overtake you to do that? Angularly, she had the advantage in the shortest direction where she was parked. The same as if a parked car would have pulled out and hit a moving car. You don't have any brakes on your carriage, obviously, do you? I do. Well, I mean, not for, you're stopping, you pull the horse up to stop. No, I just say, whoa. Okay. I you put say, whoa. on the brake to hold it steady. The brake doesn't All right. stop a horse. All right. You don't put your foot on the brake to stop. No. Did you pull up your horse? Pardon? What we saw was you appeared to be moving. Uh, I can't tell much from this, but were you moving? When, when the traffic started to move, when the light went green, Mr. Ball started to move, I started to move, then she came out. Okay. The same thing I've said every time. Then she came out. So were you, uh, you didn't uh, have to jerk your horse to the right or take any evasive I action? I pulled it to the right. I don't jerk the horse at any time. You didn't have to take an evasive action. You I haven't did have to take evasive action. Is it shown on this video? I, sh I said it and showed it. Would you like to respond if permission would permit? Well, I have the right to ask questions, though, correct? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we're, uh, we're hearing plenty from both sides well, as I, it I, is. You know, in all honesty, I stated I'm not looking to get her suspended for that. I'm not looking to get Bob and suspended. I'm looking to prove the frivolousness of their complaints about a, using the roundabout. Mr. Chairman, if Mr. Stop. I'm sorry. That's, it's not necessary if you'll let your lawyer speak for you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if he's seeking no remedy in this violation, I move to dismiss it. That's what he's just said. I'm willing to dismiss it now that it's been shown. Another voluntary withdrawal. All right. So another voluntary dismissal. I will say um, that uh, if um, carriages are picking up in the roundabout and um, Mr. Fields, is that permitted the parks department has full authority over that it's been my impression that unless you have a, a permit to use any space over there the parks does not permit it i've not spoken to specifically about this issue but i have in the past and when other people for instance some of the other people that we some of the other industries that we regulate they've asked could they use it i send them to parks and it's up to parks to issue a permit or not so that's it's it's public property but managed by the parks department and we do not have jurisdiction nor traffic and parking have jurisdiction over the space is my understanding. 
Well, it certainly appeared like Mr. Liebel um, was parked there, um, and um, it would seem that no well, carriage would be permitted to we'll, we'll speak pick up in that area. I'll speak with the director of parks and, and advise you on what I find out. So the 1240 provision that was cited does talk about like places where stopping or standing is prohibited, <coughs> um, and the general rules of the road would would still apply to this traffic right. circle just like Correct. they would anywhere else on the road. Yeah, as long the as long as you're not stopping or standing in a place where it's prohibited. All right. Well, at this point in time, we'll consider Mr. Bassett's complaint against Mr. Liebel and, and his two complaints against Ms. Cox to be voluntarily dismissed. Do we need a to make a ruling decision on the ones that he brought against Sugar Creek Carriages as well? Um, unless he's voluntarily dismissing all of them. No, he's there. Mr. Bassett, were, were you withdrawing and dismissing all of your complaints? Or just no, just the ones against Mr. LeBaw and Ms. Cox. <laughs> then yes, you do. I'm not dismissing right. the one on the obstruction of the carriage. All right, then we probably need to um, defer those, correct, allow Mr. Blackburn to. We're, we're prepared, Mr. Chairman, on the, <coughs> on the allegation that there was a cone placed. Uh, we're prepared to speak to that today if, with the commission's permission. So the, the question is, um, the, the problem with the, the allegations by Mr. Bassett against Sugar Creek Carriages as an entity is that Mr. Bassett only cited 1254-200, which is an allegation against a driver and, um, sub, um, I'm sorry, uh, Sugar Creek, not Southern Comfort, is a certificate holder. Right. Um, so um, you could have cited 1254-070-A2 against Sugar Creek, but you didn't. So the options would be to defer and allow Mr. Bassett to amend his complaint to cite the correct provision or um, to dismiss. May I ask, <coughs> since the subject has come up, what the jurisdictional basis is for a orange traffic cone placement? I, I'm not sure how that's a TLC I matter. would let Mr. Bassett characterize what he led well, the violation. Well, it wasn't that it was an orange cone. It was an obstruction intended to block us from accessing the carriage stand, and it was done repeatedly. And I'm sure that will say it was for safety purposes, but it was for spite. That's all. And oh, somebody else said something, that there's only two legal carriage stands. There's three legal spots there as Mr. Hale checked with, uh, was it Officer Douglas? Part three carriages there. I don't know who determined there's only two spaces there. They make sure that there's only two carriages parked there. But I just wanted to throw that out there. I, I'm fine with uh, deferring any complaints I have. I just wanted to get up here and speak and show the hypocrisy and frivolousness of the complaints. And the only way. We're not allowed to come up here and say, they do that too, they do that too. So I had to find an avenue to speak. I don't enjoy being up here, but I don't enjoy being bullied, including by an extension of the bullying, 50 complaints, and a high-powered luxury lawyer to drive in here. I'm standing up here by myself. This is, it's just a microcosm of what we go through down there. It's going to be their way or no way. Well, so I'm um, going to dismiss or defer that, whichever Mr. Uh, you prefer. Mr. Bassett, you've brought um, an allegation against Sugar Creek um, staff without naming anyone individually uh, under 1254-200, which only permits us to enforce um, and take action against individual drivers, not, not a company. You've alleged Sugar Creek staff repeatedly placed an obstacle on the pavement at the carriage stand sign blocking direct approach well, to park well, safely. Uh, I, so you're done. Well, I was responding also to in November 
when you issued the reprieve, it was said that the owner is responsible for all actions of his employees. And it was a ranch hand, a young girl, I don't know her name, was directed by Miss this lady here to do it. So if you need me to amend that, I will be glad to. All right. And uh, you'll have um, another reason that I do it. Does anyone want to file a uh, motion to allow Mr. Bassett a certain amount of time to amend his complaint before it or before we dismiss it? Would you like to make a motion? Yes, I'll motion to um, give Mr. Bassett 30 days to amend his complaint for three um, against Sugar Creek. Um, Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have uh, several complaints brought by Deborah Cox. Um, the first two being against Southern Comfort. While she's setting that up, Mr. Chairman, at the last meeting before it was continued to today, we submitted uh, five photographs that involved uh, American Melody and uh, not having shoes. Uh, and I presume those were made a part of the record. And the dates of those were June 29, July 29, July 7, sometime in July without a date, and a second one on July 7 that had to do with an animal. Uh, that I don't believe uh, the, um, the two involving American Melody were June 29 and July 29, and uh, you deferred that until this hearing or at least to some time in the future so that she could be served with uh, reg by registered mail. That was what was done. Those pictures are the evidence. There's really nothing further to offer. Those are pictures of her animals without shoes after the commission directed her to, to wear them. Um, so, so this is this is not the complaint against Southern Comfort? It's not. I was just, while she was setting this up, I was just asking whether that was going to be considered today. Uh, we can offer somebody to authenticate that, the pictures. That particular complaint, uh, is it on the regular meeting agenda? It's under Camp One, Tamika. Camp One, Tamika. Yeah. It's under her, I think. Yeah. It's okay. it's three allegations of 1254 200 B1. It's well, all there. It's, it's, it's just it, it's going to show under. We haven't gotten to that one. Yeah. It's, it's, no, okay. That is included within this. All right. Thank you. Now the, those and the photographs were submitted last month. I'm assuming you also brought them again this month. We, we we have photographs if necessary. And well, these are dealing with blocking the crosswalk and parking outside the carriage stand. So is that something they would uh, determine uh, well, is targeted? I think Ms. Cox, what Ms. Cox is referring to, in the first two that you have of Southern Comfort, 2, 1240, you're showing violations, two violations, the first uh, or two sections. The first one is 1240-080, and then 1240-040. Again, those are sections that are covered through a different ordinance and a, a different agency of government. Then the last, uh, then the other three are going to be violations of uh, 1254 200 uh, against Kenny Hale, Jesse Monville, and Jesse Bennett. All three of them are 1254 200 A11 issues, uh, observe, failing to observe and obey all traffic laws. So 
so again we're back to the 1254-200A11, but those are against the drivers. The others are basically, uh, some of them are going to be against the companies and some will be, I mean some of those, the earlier ones could you could deal with, for instance, uh, the issue of harnessing and uh, emaciation, malnutrition, if those are, you could, you certainly could deal with those. So, and again, you have the issue that the allegations against the company, the certificate holder, are alleged under provisions 200 and 240 that are really only disciplinary infractions by a driver for misuse. Again, they, they didn't cite 1254-070-A2 to bring it against the company. All right, well, let's take up the complaint by Ms. Cox against Jesse Monville and Kenny McFarland and Jesse Bennett. Kenny Hale. Kenny Hale. Thank you. Yes, please. Ms. Cox, you just narrate this for the commission. It was narrated on the video. They got a ride and left. And they are picking up passengers. Walk up. Okay, the, the reason I took this video is because we, they had three carriages on Broadway in front of the Hard Rock Cafe in the actual carriage stand. I'm sitting over on First Avenue in the carriage stand. All three of them pulled out at the same time, empty, and I just wanted to know where they were going. So I pulled out. They left the carriage stand, went to a non-pickup area, which is in front of Sbarro's, and started picking up passengers. They're parking in front of there, picking up passengers, when they were all three in a carriage stand. Is there a stand somewhere on Commerce Street? It is, but it is up on the other side of the red light, and it's coming down this way. On the opposite side of the street, up on the, the block. On the opposite side of the street. It's by the AT&T building. It's the first all right, all right, all right, all right. One at a time. Right. So, did, what, now how do you know who, uh, who was operating these carriages? Because I've been driving a little over three years. You saw them yourself. And I saw them myself. And when <coughs> they had just got there, so they were occupying the main stand, which is where we get most of our rides. So when they all three left at the same time empty, I just wanted to know what they were doing, where they were going. So I just left First Avenue, turned down Second Avenue, as they did, and as I'm coming up, one of them has, have already loaded left, but the other two are sitting there loading in front of Sbarro's outside of the carriage stand. All Simple right. matter, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Hale, Ms. Monville, and Ms. Bennett. Mr. Bennett. Ms. Monville's not here. I'm Mr. Hale. Uh, and uh, this is what I'd like to know. Now, yes, I left the carriage stand. Why did I leave the carriage stand? because I'm being harassed. It goes videotape, the picture taking, videotape, the picture taking. And here, Johnny Smith's branch in, say, as we're sitting there, don't ride with this company, they're alcoholics. Don't ride with this company, they do drugs. Don't ride with this company, they beat their horses. Don't ride with this company, they don't feed their horses. I'm tired of the bull crap. I'm tired of the harassment. I'm tired of the bullying. It's got to stop. It is frivolous complaints. Now, yes, I'm parked in front of Sbarro's. Why is she leaving the carriage stand empty to follow up? What if I was going to do a wedding? Why? Because they are told constantly to videotape us, to police us, 
to do anything they can to get us in trouble. They do the exact same thing. That's what Mr. Ross was trying to tell you. I've got pictures on my phone of them parking right there we have two them. days prior. We got them on the computer. My point being is, why are you videotaping me and taking pictures of me and filing complaints when Mr. Smith's employees do the exact same thing? Why do I not present complaints against them? Because I think it's bull crap. It is frivolous and it takes up y'all's time. I'm down there just to make a living, to support my family, and to do what I can for the city. And it is constant harassing, videotaping, following you. Man, I've even been down there, and Miss been here too. We go down there on Mondays and Tuesday nights when Sugar Creek doesn't work, and we're like, Thank God we can actually work and not be videotaped. Turn around and look, Mr. Smith's got two or three of his drivers down there taking pictures and videotaping. They don't even take a day off. It's got to stop. Ask them if they've ever yeah, worked. Yeah, have you ever worked there, Ms. Cox? Ms. Cox is not testifying right now. Is that all you have? I, 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 ask her for for Russell. Russell. I can talk to He's to allowed to. Mr. Bassett. Mr. Hale. I had asked her, has she ever parked there before? I'd like the commission to remember the suggestion I made last meeting about employing independent best, uh, uh, personnel. I submitted a proposal for that. I'm not going to belabor it. This is a perfect example of why I suggested all right, Miss Cox, I will would like to know the answer to the question. The only time I parked here was when it used to be a carry stand. I have not parked there when it was no longer a carry stand. There's only one matter before the commission at this moment, and that is, are they parked outside a carry stand, uh, loading or unloading passengers? The uh, respondent, if that's what he's called, has admitted it. I'm not sure what other other evidence is relevant. Uh, the so do you. I object to any of this. So it's irrelevant. There's it's no not charge. Me anyway. it's, yeah. it's, it's not me. It's not my carry. And I see a southern driver carry in that picture. That's not a southern driver. Stop time time and day. That is your boyfriend right there, or husband, wherever you, you call yourself, Mr. Hey, Bob. And that is. Can. Are you talking about my co-worker? Your co-worker? Why are you calling him my husband or my I, boyfriend? That's what I've heard. It's irrelevant. Heard from who? <laughs> it's All right. irrelevant. All right, Mr. Mr. Hale. That is Bob and that is Ken. I, I, I understand your defense to be what's good for the goose is good for the gander, uh, Mr. Hale. I understand. Um, when were these taken? That used to be a carriage thing. In June. Do you have anything else to add, Mr. Hale? That depends on they got anything to ask me. Well, you're, it's your turn to present your case or your defense. So. Well, my defense is, you know, yeah, I left the carriage stand and I went to another place to park, which was a loading zone, because I'm tired of the harassment. Mr. Bassett, could you stop the video? All right, thank you. left the carriage stand in, you could go see what I was doing. Now, I don't tell you that's harassment and stalking. That is not harassment and stalking. He, they didn't even know I was behind them. And if all three of them hadn't have left at the same time, I probably wouldn't have even thought anything about it. But in my mind, can I finish, please? Can I finish? Not all against you. All right, I think we've heard enough on this complaint so we can deliberate now. I'm sorry, Ms. Bennett, did you have anything to add to Mr. Hale? Well, um, based on the video, um, it does appear that Mr. Hale uh, did have his carriage, and Ms. Bennett, 
Um, I only saw two carriages. I don't know if I saw a third, but I saw two carriages parked in front of Sabaros. There were only two Good delivery with Bennett had already picked up and left. They're deliberating at this okay. point. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <clears throat> Miss Miss Mongol wrote a sent a, a communication to me saying that she could not be here today. She has uh, she's a student and in class. She also was in class. She's expressed frustration very much what was said. <clears throat> she could not be here today for the class. She was. She I would like to add. Broadway, one on first, and there, there is a, there's still a spot on Commerce. But just not that location. And Miss Bonville's not here, and we did not have photo or video of Miss Bennett in there. I couldn't address whether she was in it or not. I couldn't have told you who was in it. Yeah. Okay. Of the th of the two, or of the three, excuse me. All right, well, um, I, I think that regardless of the reasons why Mr. Hale and Ms. Monville left the stand, um, picking up passengers from a non-carriage stand is not permitted. So, it, so um, there has been a violation, and it appears that um, we were shown instances where Miss Cox's company, Sugar Creek, has also used Sabaros as, as a, in effect, a carriage stand. And um, it certainly seems that we've got an instance where company is it is also violating our rules um, we don't have the complaint in front of us but it is does appear to be an instance where you've got one company bringing complaints against uh, other drivers of another company where they're where they already have unclean hands um, and I predict that complaints will be brought against 
Sugar Creek for parking in front of the Sabaros if it hasn't already been included in these 50 or so complaints that we've got before us today. We can only act on the complaints that are before us, correct? Correct. Yeah. Otherwise, we could put everyone in a corner and take their toys away? We can only act on the complaints that are before us, that's correct. Okay. So we have to have a, a finding of a violation. Correct. Um, based on the evidence uh, presented, the uh, digital evidence to find a violation of 1254, this is a complaint against Mr. Hale, uh, find a violation of 1254-200-A11. think we have to actually move that we find them. I move that we find the violation of 1254-200-A11. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Do we need to continue on that or can we look at the uh, Monville and Bennett? I think we can do Monville and Bennett next. Okay. Um, based on the um, digital evidence uh, presented today, I, I move that there's not a violation of 1254-200-A11 in the case of Ms. Bennett. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. And Ms. Monville is not present. Are we able to defer that? You can defer if you choose. Or, okay. She was she was noticed, but she could not be here. Okay. On the uh, complaint of Deborah Cox against Jesse Monville, I move we defer to the next regularly scheduled meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Since the next regular scheduled meeting is next Thursday, we'll, we, and that agenda closes, okay, so we will move to the October, and, and that's fine, it's okay. the October meeting. Yeah. Okay. Make it some more sense. I'm sorry. Um, and then in the uh, case of our disciplinary action regarding the violation of 1254-200-A11, uh, to Mr. Hale, uh, I move uh, 90 days probation. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Now, uh, with respect to the complaints that Ms. Cox brought directly against Southern Comfort, um, I think we need a similar motion regarding that the way we handled Mr. Bassett's complaints against Sugar Creek carriages. And Mr. Bassett voluntarily withdrew? No, he was, he was given an additional 30 days to amend. Okay. So I'll motion to give Deborah, give Deborah Cox um, 30 days to amend um, the complaints against Southern Comfort Company. Follow. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Mr. Chairman, what I have in my hand suggesting is the next one has to do with the complaint of Deborah Cox against Jesse Bennett involving stopping in the lane of traffic to water a horse. And that's the one we're taking up. If I could urge everyone just to show the video and move on. Where, where is that on the agenda? Uh, yeah, I don't see that. I 
I think it's part of the same group, the second set. Is it, who was it filed by? Uh, Deborah Cox. I, I don't think I have that. No. Oh, I see it. It's um, behind the, the one against Monville Bennett and no, that one's not against yeah, it's, it, we have a charge. It was uh, the allegations permitted uh, on 721 around 8 p.m. on Broadway in the lanes of traffic, violating a 1254-200-A11, which is, again, shown on the agenda. Uh, that uh, Jesse Bennett stopping in a lane of traffic on Broadway to have her horse water. It may, it, we, because it was a duplicate, but it would show on the agenda. Oh. In other words, it was on the agenda and part of your packet. It's in the packet, but it's not on the spreadsheet. Right, I, I found it. Thank you. This is very brief. See up front, there's a person in front with the animal. Watering the animal, and she's in Broadway. I'm in the carriage section. All right, so your testimony is that it's uh, uh, she who is uh, operating. Jesse Bennett the, is operating the carriage, and the ranch hand is watering the horse. We sure and it's water? In the lemon ice. <laughs> no, I haven't drank from the bucket, so I can't say. <laughs> She's refreshing the animal. <laughs> yeah, obviously I didn't do that, but I wasn't blocking traffic. As you can see, it was a very slow day. There was no traffic behind me that was blocked. And there is um, one of the wagons in front of me completely stopped. So it wasn't like I was going very far anyway. Mr. Chairman, that's the case. This presents a violation and she admits having done it. And pleads mitigation. All right, thank you. The allegation is that Ms. Bennett violated 1254-200-A11, which says observe yeah. and obey all traffic laws and regulations yes. of Metro and That's State. What she says. passes.
All right, next uh, we've got a uh, complaint brought by Tina Doherty, excuse me, Doherty against American Melody Carriages. Before we move on, I, I have to correct something that I was stating earlier. Um, Ms. Cox also alleged a violation of 1254-240 against Southern Comfort as an entity. I believe that violation can actually be alleged against the certificate holder as opposed to the individual driver. I was thinking they were all 200, and <coughs> there actually is one alleged under 240, which has to do with... Um, Which, which section of 240? Is that the B3, 512? B5 and B12. Let's see, B5 is okay. not leave a horse untethered or unattended except when confined to a stable or other enclosure. And B12 is not permit a passenger to stand or ride in any part of the carriage other than the designated seating area while the carriage is in motion and to advise the passengers that they must be seated except when loading or unloading. Am I looking at the right one? No, I'm sorry. I'm, yep. I'm reading from the wrong section. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. All right. B5 of 2, that was B5 and 12 of 200. B5 and 12 of 240 is have all harness properly fitted and in good repair with no deficiencies that create a safety hazard and not have obvious signs of emaciation, malnutrition, or exhaustion, presumably in the horse, although it doesn't specify. Got it. Of B3 too? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes, and I'm sorry, B3. Right. Did not, did not have open or bleeding wound, oozing, sore, cut below skin level, or bleeding wound. So, shall we erroneously deferred? No, I don't. We gave them, I don't, we did the we, we, We've given Ms. Cox 30 days to amend because her okay. complaints against Southern yeah. Comfort also include, included several. Um, That's right. Complaints. So I, I assume a complaint about yeah. the condition of the equipment or the animal would be a complaint against the certificate holder rather than the individual right. driver. Okay. So I think that that one can be taken up against Southern Comfort. All right. Sorry. Mr. Chairman, what I assumed we were doing was Ms. Doherty's complaint about <coughs> Mr. Bassett loading in the street and being assaulted by a farmhand. That was I, I, and I, I didn't, I, before we moved on or maybe just after we started to move on, I, I corrected an earlier point. I, I suggested that the, all of the complaints that Mr. Cox had made against Southern Comfort um, were complaints under 1254-200, which is only against drivers, and that is incorrect. When I was looking back, I saw that she also had complaints under 1254-240, B3, B5, and B12, um, which are in fact correctly asserted against a certificate holder rather than an individual driver. So I think with is that the, in the commission's same complaint? Yeah. Was it in the same complaint? It oh, is. Yes. Yeah. That she may proceed to make those allegations against the certificate holder if the commission is willing to entertain that. Well, let, let's, we've, we've already filed a motion and passed it giving Ms. Cox 30 days to amend that okay, entire complaint and um, I, I would pref I would like to just have it brought up all in one all at once. I think if we're talking about such things as uh, faulty equipment or problems yeah. with animals yeah. uh, then we can certainly present those uh, together at one time in October. Okay. So then we'll, we're ready to proceed with Ms. Doherty's complaint. You want to do the one against Mr. Bassett first? Uh, they're really in the same video, okay. the same incident. I mentioned <laughs> so this will be 
clear. This is the one that was mentioned in a previous meeting uh, that there was a warrant taken against Mr. Is it Fiddler? Fielder. Fielder. Mr. Fielder. Uh, that was on the docket of uh, Judge Bill Higgins. Uh, it was continued from yesterday because the courthouse was closed because of the funeral of the uh, young man that passed away, the assistant district attorney. So that's been uh, continued to when? Hadn't been told yet. Ms. Dougherty is subpoenaed, but that is actually being prosecuted. This is that incident. Uh, so what you will see is a carriage that uh, has Mr. Bassett, and uh, Ms. Dougherty is taking a video with her phone, and then she is approached by a farmhand, and that's where the rest of it takes place. So, I kind of, you go ahead. <laughs> Loading and unloading passengers. <laughs> now, Ms. Doherty, would you just explain briefly to the commission what this video demonstrated? I was recording Mr. Bassett loading in the road. And when he saw me recording, he motioned for Mr. Fielder to come and stop me. Show me the motion. Show them the motion. Okay. And then did Mr. Fielder head towards you? Directly. All right. The person seen in the video approaching you and putting his hand in front of your phone, who is that? Mr. Fielder. All right. Uh, now, did he make any contact with you physically? Yes. What happened? He bumped me with his chest. <laughs> did you report this to the police? I did. Was an arrest warrant? Uh, Process? Yes. And is that the case that's pending in the general sessions yes. court? A simple assault case. Misdemeanor simple assault. That's all, Mr. Chairman. I have two questions here. Uh, were you driving that night? Were you driving a horse and carriage? Not at that time. You weren't. You weren't driving a mule that was laying and you took it in, then you came back downtown? I was on the road. I was off the ground superintending at that moment. So you were driving earlier that night? I don't remember. Where you were? Because sometimes I rent hands over here and I really don't. But you remember all these other details. You just don't I'm remember what you were driving about. So uh, you said you were filming. Can you instruct him? How did I instruct him? You motioned for him to come and stop me and then you grabbed your camera. That's true. Well, I didn't motion for him to stop you. And I'm going to show you, and your motion, that you claim When did you file that complaint with the police on the assault? The very next day. Why didn't you call the police that night? Didn't know his you name. People, you people call the police every 20 minutes. I don't. Somebody does. Call the police to appoint a barefoot horse? Now, I will tell you, I was parked legally at the end of the carriage stand. 
I've had it. It was after 10 o'clock at night. I don't like being down there on the weekends to begin with. I was filling in because it's nearly impossible to get people to drive for us anymore. And I saw Jesse Bennett in the riverfront, and I had it. I started to pull out to leave. As I was pulling out, several people were yelling, Russell, stop, stop, stop. I stopped, unaware. At that point, some people were up there, and some of our drivers hollered, we got you a ride. At that point, and I knew she was already there, because she had been there <coughs> minding our own business all night, and I just told those people to hurry up and get on, and I went like that. And I'm going to show you that. The volume. slow that down just so you can point out exactly when he pushed and shoved that's me. not the video that is the video no that is two separate videos he was already there parked when i started filming you're incorrect oh no oh, <laughs> oh yes you that's are that's not the same you can't even see me in there he's walking away with a stroller i'm nowhere in that video you're right next to james and then you want to Mr. Bassett, did you ask Mr. Fielder to go block the video? Of I the said nothing to anyone except those people getting on my carriage because. Up until that point, I had an unblemished record. And I knew when they stopped me, I thought it was an emergency. When those people were out there, I may have made a bad decision. I take responsibility for it. They were standing there. I went, and you heard exactly what I said. And I motioned them to get on. I said nothing to anyone else but those people getting on my carriage. All right. Thank you very much. All right, I can slow it down if she wants to talk about the assault some more. Mr. Bassett, you still haven't shown us Miss Doherty in your video. She's in there. Okay, show us. Oh, I'm going to provide you with that. I, I, I don't think that's relevant. I, I don't think there's been a sufficient cause that I, Mr. Bassett acted did not act in a reasonable, prudent, and courteous manner. Um, the only evidence I've seen is that he uh, illegal, legally picked up passengers in the lane of traffic. Therefore, um, looks like he did violate A11, which is requiring Mr. Bassett to observe and obey all traffic laws and regulations. What do the other commissioners think? Well, I can't make okay. motions. Oh, that's so. right. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I will make a motion that Mr. Bassett did violate uh, two, was it 254-200-A11 yes. by illegally pass picking up passengers in a lane of traffic. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Chairman, in the past, the, uh, we have discussed that uh, ranch hands uh, are not subject to the uh, jurisdiction of the commission. So I'm going to presume that the part directed at him is not uh, before you, and that will be handled in the general sessions court as a criminal matter. That's but correct. if he were to be convicted, um, then 
um, we may see whether we want to present that as a complaint against the carriage operator, it's the uh, carriage company itself, as an employee being convicted of a crime in the pursuit of this business. Well, if that's all your evidence, it's not much to go off of. It was enough to get a warrant sworn out by well, the against Mr. <laughs> Fielder, but not against Mr. Bassett or the company. That's right. That's right. Fielder's the only one who's uh, a criminal defendant, but he is a ranch hand. He is not a ranch hand. He was down there in Charlotte's uh, companion. He was not working for us, does not work for us. Well, that's not before us right now, uh, right. Mr. Bassett. Just clearing up the error. We, we do need to decide the, the yeah. disciplinary action for the violation. Yes. I would move that 90 day probation for Mr. Bassett. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Next one, Mr. Chairman, by Lori Lancaster. Uh, well, there's several by Tina Doherty that we still have. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. The next one will be withdrawn when we get to it. <coughs> What's the next one? I don't know that these are in any particular order, order but you have the one a preference on which one he does next. <coughs> no, I did. As long as we stick with Mr. Woods. How about sitting with Is this the June 24? Kenny, Kenny Hale. Hale. We start the video. How did you happen to take this video? I was working my second job that night, and it happened to be in front of me. Came up next to me. Are you? I'm a, a Lyft driver, Uber and Lyft. Uber and Lyft driver. Do you have a, a camera on your dashboard or someplace in your vehicle? I have several. Okay, and that was taken from one of those. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. See on the right, that is a Hummer. That's a gentleman who must work in the vicinity because that vehicle's there quite often. Who's in the carriage here out on the street loading with tra passengers? Is that Mr. That's Hale? That's Mr. Hale. All right. <coughs> what lane of travel is he in? The left turn only lane. Exactly where is he? It's on 3rd? 3rd. 3rd Avenue headed which? Towards Broadway. Towards Broad. moves first. The traffic signal has changed. Yes. All right. Then the 
Hummer moves. See the <coughs> brake lights went off and starts to move. He moves in front of the Hummer. Where does he go? Takes a right turn. On what? On the Broadway? On the Broadway. I think that's it. Mr. Chairman, it's that simple. He loaded passengers in the <coughs> turn lane on 3rd Avenue, then he pulled in front of a moving vehicle to make a right turn from a left turn lane. That is an obvious uh, moving violation, which was, is within your jurisdiction, in addition to the unsafe loading practice. Um, was, that, um, was there a solid line between the left turn lane and the yes. other lane? Yes. Mr. Hale? Chairman. I was going, please step up on the stage. I was going back to the carriage stand. I was empty. I was in the left hand lane. I was going to make a left hand turn. Some people asked me about a ride. And I said, yes, I will take you for a ride. Now, the Humber is also an Uber or Lyft. And right there at Third Avenue, the Ubers and the Lyfts sat there constantly. And there was also people walking across the street. When I proceeded, the Uber driver, which is in the Hummer, allowed me to go in front of him. So I did turn right, and I was in the left-hand lane. Now, Uber and Lyft fix up people all over the place. Left lane, right lane, middle Broadway. I realize they're not here filing complaints. But my point being is, I find it very convenient that Miss Darty was driving a Lyft or Uber, whatever it is she drives, and just so happens to be down there so she could videotape, therefore, again, another Southern Comfort carriage. Now, I am aware that she has cameras all over her place, but she could also file complaints against the tractors, she could file complaints against the pedal cabbers, the bicycles, the golf courts. There again, it's the same thing over and over and over again. Sugar Creek is just trying to file complaints against Southern Comfort so they can monopolize the carriage industry. I am 53 years old. I'm not 13. I am tired of the bull crap and the playground activities going on down here. All they have to do is act like adults, do their job, and go on. I do not work for Metro Police. I am not going to sit down there and take video after video after video. Yeah, I could go down there and follow them around. But why? It's frivolous and stupid complaints. I know you get tired of hearing this. Why do they file complaints on us for the same thing that they're doing? It all has to do with all they're trying to do is monopolize the care system. I mean, we're not even allowed, out of common courtesy, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, it has nothing to do with this video. Out of common courtesy, in years past, when a carriage passes another carriage, regardless of what company it is, hi, how you doing? Or, it's hot out here. You can't even wave at them people because they don't say nothing back. And the other thing is, I don't know what the obsession is with Miss Darty, with Mr. Russell, but two days after the last meeting, she puts a little stuffed animal on her carriage, which is a dog, and names it Russell. Now, he thinks it's funny. I think it's not funny because it is an insult. Taunt. And it's, I mean, it's just bull crap. This is crazy. All right, so if I understand correctly, your defense is you couldn't pull over into the right lane because the Ubers and Lyfts were just sitting there parked? That is correct, sir. 
Uh, not but really you, a loading zone anyway. But that, but that is not a pickup zone because your carriage can only no, pick sir, up. No, it's not a pickup zone for Uber and Lyft either, but they do. It's right. not a pickup zone for taxis, but that they do. Uber or Lyft. But you can't pick up passengers regardless in except well, in, in the in the stands, regardless. correct? You can only pick up passengers out of the stands, correct? No, that is not correct. You show me in the rules and regulations where it states you can only pick up passengers or drop them off in a carriage stand. Well, you can't pick them up and drop them off in the lane of traffic, though. The light is red, and they got on the carriage. The right lane is sitting dead still because it's full of Ubers and Lyfts. The crosswalk, there's people walking. You couldn't go if you wanted to. And therefore, again, I mean, it's no different. If I was, to, uh, out of all due respect, Mr. Blackburn, if I was to pass Mr. Blackburn going down the road at 45 miles an hour at the 30 mile speed zone, <coughs> am I going to take a video of it, turn it into Metro Police, and go, here, you need to write this man a ticket? Mr. Chairman, if I may ask. Do you admit to this commission that you loaded passengers at a turn lane on 3rd Avenue? I'm not going to deal with your lawyer crap. <laughs> of course you can see I loaded passengers in the left end line. Well, what difference I'll, I'll take there? I'll take that as a yes. Okay. You can take, take it however you want to take it. I tell you, it makes a safety difference. <laughs> uh, who is the driver of the so-called Uber? What, in the Hummer? I didn't catch his name. You didn't catch his name? No. You, you just knew he was an Uber driver? Well, it says Uber on the daggone windshield. You see that in that video? No. No. Can you prove that to me? I can. Ms. Darty, have you, do you see this vehicle downtown with some frequency? The oh, yes. Uh, have you spoken to the individual who was driving it that evening? I did. Is he an Uber driver? He's not. Was that an Uber mission that night? And you're an Uber and Lyft driver yourself. Yes. That's all. Yeah. Is this character going to be allowed just to wander over everywhere? Well, if the wish of the Blackburn does it mine. Not my decision. The case would be over if it were. <laughs> all right. I think I think we've heard enough. Um, leave it for the commission to uh, deliberate. that he did pick up passengers in a lane of traffic. That's a violation, respectfully. Then it's up to the prosecution to establish the violation. He, they've alleged 1254 to begin with A11. Which is the observe and obey all traffic laws and regulations. Oh, sorry. I, you can if you'd like. No, no you, you had the floor. <laughs> I, roll. I, I will move that, sorry, Mr. Kenny Hill was in violation of 1254-200-A11 by picking up passengers in a lane of traffic. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. As far as disciplinary, we've already put him on. Day, is that correct? Yes. Yes. I'm not sure how the other commissioners would like to proceed. Do we do an additional 90 days or other thoughts? We've also um, just run probationary periods consecutively if it's all being brought at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so we could, we could do that as well. Or, or concur concurrent, concurrent, excuse me. Commission in the past have done it both ways, added them together for a total of, in this case, if you did 90, it'd be 180, or doing another 90 and let them run concurrent with the original 90. Or something completely different. Thank <laughs> you. 
first one was for July the 21st. This one is for July the, I'm sorry, for July 22nd. So it'd be two consecutive nights. <coughs> Two separate, two separate things. things. Correct. Okay. Sorry. Just falling under that same ordinance number. Okay. I would make a motion for the 90 day probation to be served. Is it concurrently? Is that right? At the same time. At the same time. Thank you. <laughs> I'll second Thank that. you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there's one that Ms. Dowdy <coughs> filed, and the respondent was. Um, Charlotte Clawson. This was only received by the commission on September the 5th, so I'm not sure if this is on today's agenda. It is. We it is. It. Okay. Well, then we're well, ready. Three. Yeah. See here, Ms. Doherty. Because I was going by the carriage, that past that carriage is loaded, there is no driver on that seat. But he is being held like he is supposed to be with a lead line, which does not break any regulations, period. Isn't that? This is frivolous, James Fielder. This is bullying. This is five complaints. You get May we seven finish seven our presentation? Right, what, Can what, we what, have some more? One, here's one at a time. We're going to speak one at a time. We'll clear the room if we need to. The commission can't do so. When you're called upon, please answer. You'll have an opportunity, but please, let's have some order in the chair. We'll provide that order. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. The man holding the horse is James Fielder, who she just said didn't work for him. Has previously been described as not being employed by Southern Company. Cool. He comes down there for my protection because of the harassment against the Okay. Miss Clawson, hang on a second. Let Mr. Blackburn finish his presentation. I'm going to let you then speak. Okay. All right. I think, Mr. Chairman, you've seen the evidence. It's a, a, a carriage loaded with passengers. The person who is standing in front of the horse has been identified as a person who does not even work in the carriage industry. Uh, and what he's doing and so forth can't really be, uh, can't really be judged. Straightforward violation, and it's a safety violation too. There's no one in the the area where the driver sits. You call that a box. In the box. There's not a permitted driver operating in the box. Yeah. And these uh, are supposed to have permitted drivers in the box to operate when you have passengers. Thank you. On this particular night, which is actually the last night I worked because I cannot work without the harassment. It's ridiculous, so I've stopped working. Um, I was down there and my boyfriend was with me. I had to use the restroom. So I had him hook the lead rope and hold the horse. While I was at the restroom, people came up and they chose that carriage to ride which is where the animosity is coming from because they chose a carriage that didn't even have a driver when everybody else was really ready to go and they were willing to wait on it. So he had the lead rope hooked up, which their range hand doesn't even do, and there's no violation. He is not a permitted driver, but he was not driving.
similar circumstance. No one attended the horse. Horses can be frightened, spooked, if you will. Who, who was um, minding the horse? As in the right then? In the video? James Felder. Was he working that evening? He does not work for us. He was just down there sitting on the box with me. Which started in about September of last year when the harassment got so bad that we had to continuously call the cops on Sugar Creek carriages for bidding, flipping us off. So what does Mr. Fielder do? Um, he is a construction worker. He drives a dozier. But he does not work for your company? He does not. He has never been paid by, and that would be what a job would consist of. Did you ask him to mind your horse while you went to the restroom? I did. Um, I did not expect to have to use the restroom, but it did come up. We were sitting in the carriage stand, so I went to the restroom and came back. What's his role if he's not working? your company? Uh, he sits up there with me. He assists people. Like people, if they if they need, like if they have a carriage, because I'm sit, set on a box and I can't do everything, he's, a, he's just there as an extra hand to me. Or to anyone else that needs it. I've lent him out to several different drivers for different companies. But he's never been paid for it. He just does it out of the kindness of his heart. So Mr. Fielder does not work for Southern Comfort, but he just lends hands to Because, yes, because I work for them, or worked for them. Is, is Mr. F do you have a relationship with him? Is he your boyfriend? Is yes. he a relative? Okay. Yes, we've been together. I, I, that's years. what I was misunderstanding. Um, and the horse was tethered? He, he was, yes. He had the lead rope in his hand, which is connected to the bridle. Well, under 1254-200, I'm, I'm looking to see if there's something in the rule that prohibits uh, a carriage company or carriage driver to leave their carriage attended by someone not employed with the carriage company, and I don't see anything like that. I do see under A5 that you are not permitted to leave your horse untethered or unattended except when confined to a stable or other enclosure. But that does not appear to have been violated. Um, the claim specifically alleges that you violated A11 by failing to observe and obey all traffic laws and regulations of Metro and State. That is not also clear to me based on the evidence presented given that the I horse was left with um, someone controlling him. I think that might be a different time. Have a July 28, A3. A. This one was September 4th. Oh, yeah, that was September 4th. I have it being July 28th at 9.18 p.m. by the one that allegedly occurred on September the 1st and filed on the floor? I see. Yes. Okay.
Okay, so thank you for correcting me to the correct complaint. I, I, I was looking at a different one you had filed, I guess we're going to get to in a moment against Ms. Paulson, but um, you've alleged that she violated um, 1254, 200, uh, A, but you did not cite a subsection. You also alleged she violated 1254, 120, A, which I believe is uh, That's related to a driver, no person shall operate or otherwise operate, shall a driver otherwise operate a carriage engaged for the hire service unless he or she has driver's permit. All right. And then the last one is 1254-200B regarding the safety of the horse. Well, um, do y'all have anything else to add? No, Mr. Chairman, this is a, um, plainly when you have a non-permitted driver operating the carriage, that's an obvious violation. If he is not permitting, the question would be whether holding the animal constitutes some sort of operation. Uh, having these passengers, the reason that I wanted to make sure this was presented is this is a plainly dangerous situation. You have passengers in a carriage. You have a person who is unpermitted, here as we can tell, has no training to this whatsoever. And he's standing there holding the, the reins of a horse, placing the people and the animal in danger. Now, it may be that that doesn't fit into these particular items. I'm not going to make some effort to make it up. But it does, this does involve tolerating a, a dangerous circumstance that is obvious on its face. I would like to add that I actually have a picture of Sugar Creek carriages doing the exact same thing. Irrelevant, Mr. Chairman. Because you can draw this and make this a, this is, Mr. Stacken holding the reins on Broadway while he drove down Broadway. He is non-permitted. Johnny was holding. Oh, so he was holding it? But he has Chairman, some, some sort of attention to relevance. Uh, when, when was this? This, this was All right. I, I don't think it's relevant. Well, what I just want to know what the date was. And that's, <clears throat> that's June of 2018? With the ring. Just June. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I would point to the subsection 5, which you mentioned earlier, not leave a horse untethered or unattended except when confined to a stable or other enclosure. I think the intent of that, I think the intent of that, obviously, is to have the permitted company and permitted drivers enforce this part of the regulation. Uh, they're not saying the animal was tethered, they're saying it was attended. By virtue of this argument, uh, they could just ask one of these construction workers to step off the site, take off his hard hat, and handle the horses. That's true. You're having a, um, uh, <coughs> I would argue that a horse is unattended not have a qualified person or an employee of the company attended. Uh, Mr. Pingler was under no uh, actual obligation to stay there. Uh, he was a, had a personal obligation to this young lady, but uh, he wouldn't have violated any law of this commission or anything else if he just dropped those reins and walked away. He didn't have the reins. He had the lead post. Ladies and gentlemen, this is common sense. 
That's her boyfriend. The only reason he ever started riding with her is because of their constant harassment. The rule says don't leave a horse unattended. She went to the restroom. The horse is not left unattended. Now he's not a member of Southern Comfort. A few minutes ago, when they claimed he pushed this lady over here, which he did not do, then he's a member, uh, an employee of Southern Comfort. We're just getting way off on just ridiculous situations. They're very angry because the people chose that carriage. That's what it all boils down to is money. And the people chose, and they're mad because their carriages are sitting there and they're not getting on their carriage. All right. Thank you. I think we've, we've heard enough on this one. We can deliberate now. So it's clear in the ordinance that you can't leave the horse untethered. It's also shown in the video that the boyfriend was holding the horse for her. But I'm trying to figure out, as I'm trying to sort search through the ordinance, do we see anything that says it has to be an employee? I mean, the language is plain in that particular position. It, it does not say. <coughs> Who, it says a driver shall at all times, number five, not leave a horse untethered or unattended except when combined to a stable or enclosure. It stopped. Is there, I guess, anywhere in the rest of it? It, it also says it, there's another section that talks about not allowing a carriage to be operated by anyone other than a driver. Right. So the question becomes the operation. operation yeah, and I did not look at the definition to see if, there, if there's a definition for operation. There's not. But. Well, um, this, this does not, to me, seem to rise to a level of a violation. Um, There's probably, um, there probably needs to be a protocol for situations like this where the driver needs to excuse him or herself for any reason. Um, so, you know, how, how can um, the driver put his, uh, put his um, carriage um, in a safe place or, or be handled in a safe manner? Um, it looks like Miss um, Clawson did, in my opinion, take the reasonable steps in ensuring that her horse was attended while she went to the restroom. Um, in terms of the public safety issue, certainly if something had, uh, had happened where um, the horse ran off or, or Mr. Fielder lost control of the horse or people got injured, um, the um, carriage company certainly would be responsible. But I still don't see an actual driver violation or conduct violation in my opinion. There were passengers that boarded the carriage, right? That, the testimony was they boarded the carriage while she was away to the restroom. Is right. that correct? That is. Uh, I wonder, because there are passengers in there, that 
that there would be a requirement to have the carriage under the control of the licensed driver? I don't think there's any question that um, the, those passengers should should not have loaded the vehicle, uh, and that's probably an area where these our rules need to be clear um, who a driver can leave their carriage with, because obviously Mr. Fielder was not trained to know, to tell the passengers, wait <coughs> until the driver comes back. Sorry, I feel like this has been discussed, but nowhere in the ordinance does it say they just have to make sure the horse is tethered, but there's nothing specifically that says it has to be a permitted person that's holding correct. that is so correct. But then I see Tom's point that he did allow them to come on, but because he's not a permitted and hasn't had the training, he did not know to ask that. But I feel like she was trying to do the right thing by making sure there was someone there with her horse rules are not there to specifically say and in case there's any question about James Felder's uh, knowledge of horses he lives there on the farm he rides horses and he knows horses if that has anything to do with whatever you're thinking about I think we're ready for a motion. The only provisions that are cited are, are 1245 200 and 1254 200A. So 120. 120. 1254 120. So let's just hone in specifically on what we're looking for. On 1254 120, the question is did the person operate? Because in order to be in violation of 1254 120, you would have to find that he operated. We do not have the definition of operate. Right. If you switch over to 1254-200, you have act in a reasonable, prudent, and courteous manner. That's what you'd be trying to decide. So is needing to go to the restroom and leaving the, leaving the reins or the tether with a person standing there acting in a reasonable, prudent, and courteous manner? Or not acting in a reasonable, right? So I'm just trying to help you minimize you. what you're looking for. <laughs> Thank you. Because it does seem to get uh, difficult so specifically did do you consider or do you believe that he was operating by holding the reins 
If not, there's no violation of that section. Do you believe by allowing him to hold the reins, they were acting in an unreasonable, unprudent manner? And I don't think that she violated 1254-200 or 1254-120. Then I will make a motion that Ms. Charlotte Claussen was not in violation of either 1254-200A or 1254-120A. Is there a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. If permission, please. Ken Howard, National Guard. I've been here for, since we started, just about, I think I was five minutes late. I've got a criminal matter that I need to be involved in down in Dixon County about an hour ago, and I need to get out of here. I would appreciate it if we could defer Ms. American Melody matters until the next meeting. That's fine. We're going to be wrapping up before five anyway. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It looks like we have another complaint against Ms. Claussen. This is the one for July 29, 18. Date of the incident, 7-28-18. Yes, I've got two occurring on that day, one at 7-30, one at 9-18. One of them is that of Ms. Lee. Ms. Daugherty is the other one. If we could just go ahead and... This is basically about... This is about allowing a passenger to drive a carriage, operate a carriage. have the reins in his hand? He does not. I would never allow or permit someone to have the reins in their hands. What's he got in his hands? I don't know. Uh -huh. He was actually sitting up there because his father was in a wheelchair and he needed the space in the back. And so he asked me if this seat beside me, which is the designated seat, if he could sit up there. And I said yes. tell that the hand is not coming out of the chest of the gentleman with the cap. That's um, your hand. Okay. Right. What, what about my hand? I would never allow it. It's, it's what's in your accusation. What's in your hand? What's in your hand? I can't see. That's because there's nothing in it. Okay. okay. I would never allow it, and if this is your evidence, I don't know what else to tell you. I, I did not allow it. Do you have a designated passenger area in your carriage? Um, you're talking about the designated seats. I did not prop a cooler up and tell him to sit on it. The question was really, really that simple. That is not a part of the ordinances. The question, question is quite simple, ma'am. Do you have a designated passenger area in your carriage? 
The man was sitting on a designated seat. Are you saying that the box where the operator sits is a designated passenger area? I'm saying that is a seat he was sitting on. He was not driving. But y'all had Jimmy, who brought his, what, five-year-old, four-year-old, and y'all drove with him for a month out there on the box? So... all of that one. You saw this yourself? Yes. Did she have the reins in her hands? She did not. Who had the reins in his hands? Did. Okay. What's the rest of the video? Is it just more of the same? It's more of the same. It's just over on the camera. It's the same. Their body cameras continue rolling, so why wouldn't they just cut that footage to where they could see when I pull into the... I was actually on my way to Hard Rock to go to the girls' room, and I used that one. Mr. Blackburn, do you have anything else? No. Well, not on that. All right. Um, State your name. My name is Jamie Lee. Were you present when that occurred? Uh, I was working that night. Um, 20 minutes prior to that would have been the beginning of her ride. As they were coming down Broadway, I was coming the opposite direction. Um, the gentleman was in the driver's box, and when they saw me, she said, and he, she took the reins back from him. Okay, thank you. I'm going to say from the video, I find it hard to see. Yeah, I, I agree. It appear that he has the reins from what I can see. The, uh, Mr. Chairman, what she just referred to is actually described in the next in the next uh, complaint, the one that has Ms. Lee's, uh, this is in support of the, the one subject now, but it also, that is the testimony uh, to be offered in the next uh, complaint. The next complaint involving uh, Ms. Clawson that, with the uh, five-year-old in the driver's yes. box as well? Yeah, it says at 8.58 p.m. I passed Charlotte on Broadway at the intersection of 3rd Avenue with an adult male in the box. She was allowing him to drive her carriage. Upon seeing, uh, noticing me, she hastily grabbed the reins from him and started laughing. That's basically what she just testified to. It's the same thing. I would have said you would have camera, or you'd have footage of that, right? Don't you wear body camera? I would love to see that as well. I would never get the reins, so I would love all of you to see what would happen. But currently, we're looking at this one, right? The one by Tina. Floor 1254-283, which is not permitted person other than, and I could see no evidence of that in that video. And then 1254-190, which is. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next, we have a uh, similar complaint brought against Ms. Clawson um, by Ms. Doherty uh, the same evening earlier. This says date of time of incident is 7.30 p.m. Mr. Flagburn? Now, is that the one that she... This, oh, okay. Yes. the same incident with two different complaints. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, these are, there are two complaints, one filed by Ms. Lee and the other filed by Ms. Doherty, uh, and they appear to involve the same, the same incident. So I presume they can just be heard at 
once with one exception. Um, this video, when you see it, will show a significant hole in the floorboard of the carriage. No, that's not. What it says. That's what it says. Play the other one that does show the hole in the floorboard. Is this the same event? Ms. Clawson, so um, the seat next to the driver is in fact a designated seating area? It is a seat. Now, for that instance, they asked, or she, she kept pointing up there, like she wanted the child to sit up there. There was a language barrier in the, in the stand, but since I had seen it, I've been doing this for four years, multiple times, I thought not twice about letting a child I got to have children of my own I would not put them in a position where I thought safety was an issue I did not feel unsafe at any point but of course I'm regardless of this is there such a thing as, a, as an official designated seating area is my question I've never heard of it until today honestly I read designated seat when I read the ordinances. I'm not sitting him on a seat. I mean, that's what we have, and I would never do that. So I, I assumed I was under what I needed to be to enable to do that right. Mr. Chairman, in that regard, if I could ask for a limited this, Mr. Chairman. You purchased carriages. Robert's carriages designates the two seats in the back as passenger carriage seats. That's what that's how they sell these carriages. The front seat, United States wide throughout the industry, the front seat is the designated driver's box, not a passenger. It, some, it, it's, it's dangerous to do that. So it, it, it's called it box. Yes, driver's box. That seems to me like that would be someone's opinion more than anything else. As you have an opinion, as I have. All right, well, thank you very much. Okay. I didn't see the child stand up in the video.
Would you like to make a motion? Um, I'll make a motion um, that no, I, I, from the video and from the ordinances, I could see no ordinance being broken. Um, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Looks like there's one more complaint against Ms. Clawson. Um, the complaint date is June 22nd, 2018. Yes, also brought by Ms. Doherty. I'm advised that that particular one has to do uh, with someone driving for American Melody, so that might have, uh, since council asked for That's fine. It to be put over, we can do that later. We need to make an official motion. These three, if we could do these very quickly, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, do we need to make a motion to defer the American Melody? I know yeah. Mr. Highland asked already, and I yeah, just I sort of <laughs> Said it was okay, but I don't know. Go ahead and make a motion, I please. Make a motion that we defer uh, any complaints against American Melody until the next scheduled meeting uh, for in October. I'll second. Or All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. repeat the date uh, the date of the complaint is 7 22 18 the date of the incident no. okay. I beg your pardon I got given three of these and I'm trying to get them all done quickly uh, 6 11 18 is the date uh, and the date of the, uh, what did you say the date of the June, 10th. June 10th at about 9 p.m. is what's noted on the complaint about uh, yeah, operation of the carriage, Southern, Co Southern Comfort Carriage by, <coughs> this says, Kenny. <coughs> Specifically against Mr. Hale? Yes. What's the date of this? We can't find this one. June the. It was this one. It was filed on 6 11. June the 10th. That's probably a weed thing. Those are my weed thing. That's your everyday, <coughs> that's your everyday text that's message uh, device. Yeah, I'm sure you got one too. I do. I don't drive a carriage with it. I see, I see two. I'll bet you I don't. What do you want? Both for unintended. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's all of this. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Hale wants to uh, respond, but it's it's obviously against the law to operate any vehicle while texting. In this instance, this is a driver not in control of the carriage because he doesn't even have his hands on the reins, and he's turning around looking at the back. Uh, this is pretty egregious. Do you have a copy of the complaint? Thank you. Can I have an email from Mr. Fields confirming he did get it? And he said yes, it would be heard. Hey, 
it clearly it's noticed on the agenda. There's no question about that. I just don't have it. I'm not sure it was delivered to you. It's on the agenda because it's it's under where her complaints are against and Kenny Hale is one of the people she complained against. So well, yeah. from a, two other complaints she didn't send over. Sure. Sure, I would not I did not list them all individually. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So if someone had three complaints or four complaints by the same person, I would have listed it one time. Were you, were you in fact texting Mr. Hale? I couldn't see if I was texting or not. I might have just been reading a text or I could have been Did looking at something else. I mean, could you play the video again, please? Thank you. Mr. Hale, did, did you get a copy of this particular complaint in the mail? No, sir. With 55 different complaints, it's possible that it did not get, we prepared this four times, or three times, this is the third time we prepared it. It's possible he does not have this in his packet. But you know what, Mr. Fields, it really Thank doesn't you. matter. This is gonna go on and on and on and on. And, he sir, and I will go ahead and let the board know that I will be filing at least 15 to 20 complaints for next month. He certainly has the right to go ahead and, and if he waives that right, you have the right to consider. I can't go I mean, it. it's just, uh, I didn't want to do all this because of the simple fact, it's just, it's crazy. It's frivolous, stupid stuff. Go downtown, do your job. Don't worry about everybody else. I mean. I think his attorney wants to talk to you. <laughs> no, 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 show no, show me where the phone better. is again. I'm sorry. Could you show me where the phone is? to caution everybody on putting a lot of credence in these complaints. We uh, tried to bring to y'all's attention back last year about all the harassment we were getting. Mr. Chairman, this and it's been doubled down. down. I'm going to tell Mr. Smith they have to get up and start talking and we'll be here. They have doubled we down. Have I, I tend to agree, this, this complaint let Mr. Hill defend himself and right. let us make a ruling. The harassment comes from there. Right there. We're not going to settle after that. <laughs> now, yeah, I, probably got, I look like I got my phone in my hand. Uh, my reins are in the other hand. You picked them up out of your lap. You said you just picked them up out of your lap. When you are going down the road taking the video, and you got your phone up there. I'm what sorry. Are you going I wasn't on the. I wasn't on a chair. I was on the ground. Well, I don't care. I see you do it all the time. All right. Let's not. Do. Let's not engage into a back and forth. I think we've heard enough, and we can deliberate on whether there's a violation. I can't tell from the video whether the reins are still in his hand or not, but it's clearly he, Mr. Hale is on his phone uh, engaged with it somehow. Um, you obviously, we obviously can't tell if he's texting or if he's just looking at a message or looking at an app or something. Thank you. Um,
Can you go back? Okay. We're going to have order, or we'll clear the room of everyone except those part of the program, part of the meeting, okay? We're going to have to stop the outburst. I don't think there's enough evidence of him not having possession of the reins. Um, it's my opinion. Can I see that? Thank you. That's uh, A15 and B. So 1254-200 A15 and 1254-200 B. So what's, it says B, is that B at? B is just a. Right, but it, does that say B on all there or is that? A11. Uh, That's just a misprint in no, the A11. So it's A15, B, and A11. So the closest one that they're, they might have Mr. Hale on is number 11, A11. Sorry about that. That might be an and. Right. Yeah, it could be an and. 15 is be responsible for the proper and humane care yeah, and treatment yeah. of each horse. Sorry to add to the confusion. And then A11 is to observe and obey all traffic laws and regulations of Metro and State. Yeah, that, that may be an amber sand instead of a B. Mr. Hale, do you remember what you were doing on your phone? Well, you know, we do get pick up. I could have got a text for a pickup. It's no different than an Uber driver. Yes.
Well, I, I gather from the evidence presented that the complaint is that Mr. Hale was engaged on his phone and, and not directing his 100% attention to driving the carriage. It, that's their argument. Now, the video just shows that he is looking at his phone, um, but we don't know exactly what he's doing. Um, I mean, I look at my phone to see what time it is, too. I don't wear a watch. Yeah, I don't think we can tell have any uh, clear information on what he might have been doing. Speakerphone, texting, looking at time, we don't know from the video. I just would, I just pulled up section 558199, use of handheld mobile telephone or personal digital assistant prohibited while driving. And it does prohibit while driving a motor vehicle. All right, well, it looks like we can have a motion then. Would you like to make a motion? And A11 is one of the items on the complaint, right? Right. Well, I think based on Ms. Ladd's comment, then I move we find a violation of uh, 1254 200 A11. I think Ms. Ladd was saying that it's, it, that law applies to motor vehicles. Right, and this is observe and obey all traffic laws and regulations of Metro State. But a horse carriage doesn't have a motor. Is what I'm well, it just says all traffic laws. It doesn't say motor vehicle. It says observe and obey all traffic laws and regulations of Metro State. I don't know. I've made it. We have and, a motion. <laughs> and you guys can <laughs> let it fall. You can let it fall flat. I mean, I, I think it's up to um, Mr. Blackburn and his <coughs> client to articulate what their complaint is alleging the violation is of. Um, but I mean, I don't know whether there would be another provision just generally prohibiting distracted driving, but I, I'm speculating, which is why I look to them to like articulate what they're alleging. Well, I think we should, I think someone should make it, well, we have a motion on the table. If there's no second, we'll, uh, motion fails. Um, I do think someone should make a motion, though, that Miss um, uh, Warren Zuniga's complaint fails to, uh, because there has not been a violation of 1254-200-A5 or A11. Starting with that premise, um, now we look to the violations that were specifically cited. And the violations cited was um, failure to observe and obey all traffic laws and regulations and be responsible for the proper and humane care and treatment of each horse under the direct care and supervision. So we talked about the traffic laws. I gave you the definition that includes a motor vehicle. Um, a horse-drawn carriage does not have a motor. Um, 
To my knowledge, uh, we also, you have not deliberated concerning the proper and humane care and treatment of each horse. Um, but if you were to take 11, I believe we discuss, we have discussed that, so that would just leave 15 for your discussion. I move no violation of 1254-200-A15. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Concerning the definition again, which is the onus should be on um, the complainant to say what specific traffic law they're referencing. The section that I'm reading for or from says that this section, hold on one second, this section shall only apply to a person driving a motor vehicle that is in motion at a time, at that time. Um, and it goes on to say that, but again, it pulls in the motor vehicle aspect of it. It is as all state. It is. Yeah. Yep. Of Metro and state, though. So if you want to take it separately, that is a state provision. Do you think that's applicable? And then you also have Metro traffic laws <coughs> and regulations. And they haven't been able to cite a Metro traffic law and regulation specifically that, that they're in violation of, I don't think. I haven't. Uh, I'm not aware of one. Okay. you have a hang up and you may need to add that on a drafting that you, you, you now that you figured this out that you might think that's something we should add <coughs> if we open up the code section again we can certainly do that mm -hmm. I think that would definitely help yeah. <coughs> one more here if we can hear this, see this well let's we actually, still need to make a, a official ruling on on this one I do think we do need to what was your original is, okay. is it okay for me to ask you to repeat your original motion well no there's no pending motion right now the one motion that we passed was that there was no violation of a a let or excuse me a 15 but we need to make a ruling on whether uh, the complainant met her burden with respect to a 11 after further clarification from Metro Legal, I find, move that we find no violation of 1254-200-A-11. I'll second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. <laughs> your, um, your employee failed to meet her burden in proving that Mr. Hale was not driving without the reins. And this will be the last one for the day. It's 515. I do have one I want to ask you about. Okay. Because it's one separate from all the companies. Go ahead, Mr. Blackburn. This, this one will be brief. Um, the date of the alleged defense is July 21. The complaint filed 722. Ms. Warren Zuniga. Have your chance. Just a second. Will, you're going to have a second. Right here is Penny's back here in that white hat. The passengers are on the carriage and there is no one in front of this horse to head it. And this happens on numerous occasions. <coughs> I'm going to see if I can zoom it in. given 
time could have walked off and hurt those passengers. Could have killed them, they could have fallen off, that horse could have bolted. If I, you guys want to see the beginning, there's a whole other video of them with a whole other incident where he's done the same thing. I'm just trying to shorten it up for time, maybe as quick as possible. <coughs> Mr. Hale, you, you can make a response. Now. Ms. Warren Zuniga. That's, a, that's enough, everyone. All right. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Yeah. I think we just adjourn. It's another one to file a motion. Two weeks ago, there was a TV show on pink collar crime involving two carriage companies in Kansas City. It came to the point where it's just like this right here. One against the other, one against the other. And one of the carriage owners even hired a hitman to take out the other one. And, you know, the, this has just got to stop. It's nothing but just bull crap. And I can approve that. Everybody, please sit. Everybody, please sit down. This is an official Metropolitan Commission meeting, and it's degrading quickly. And everybody needs to calm down. We're going to have one person present their case at a time. It's Mr. Hale's turn. Nobody needs to be making outbursts. Mr. Hale, you do need to keep your defense to relevant issues to talk about this incident, this complaint. Now, you've said in your defense that there was a ranch hand that's there not is. in the frame of this photo. Correct. But do you see him anywhere close to the horse? The rule states that you have to be within 10 foot. That's, that's not what I've seen in the rules. But it, Mike, I'm asking, Mr. Clint Lemoyne wrote the rule. I, what is the rule? Ten feet away from the horse. Ten feet away from the horse. Can we have a code section, please? I'm looking at 1254-200, Mr. Hale, A5. It says, a driver shall at all times not leave a horse untethered or unattended except when confined to a stable or other enclosure. So and the complaint being brought against you is a violation of A five and B and then twelve fifty four two hundred B. So Mr. Hale, are you, um, is it your position that you're attending to the horse here? I am behind the carriage. What would you do if the, if the horse started moving and well, walked away? Do you have anything else to present at this point, Brian? 
No, Mr. Chairman, I would remind the Commission that on all other rulings today, if it wasn't in the video, you didn't find it. Uh, I don't know about any 10-foot rule. Uh, I don't know if, if there's someone lurking behind the taxi. I don't know if that person was in 10 feet. Uh, he's not identified. We don't know what his mission is. But what we do know is that a carriage with citizens in it has no person, no permitted driver in control whatsoever. That's a plain violation. Did you see the entirety of the video? Do you want to see it? Can you play the rest of the video? Is this a video or just a still it's image? A it's, it's still for photos that have been turned into a video. Yeah, I can't see the. Uh, Any ropes? There's no. There's nothing. There's nothing here. There's no rope holding the horn. Nothing. There's no rope here. Kenny's all the way. There's nobody there. All the kids are looking back at him. Why? Is this the day that you sat across the street at uh, National Underground because he was undercover taking pictures of the video that day? Nope. Okay, because I can clearly see the National Underground. This is the day you took the children in danger. This is a couple days after the incident. Yeah, I believe this is also the day that National Underground asked you to leave. No, I've never been asked to. Leave All right, we're, we're starting to degrade again. Yeah. Disintegrate. <laughs> All right, I think we've we've heard enough from the parties. Thank you. Well, I mean, this seems like of the complaints we've seen today, a, a clear, um, uh, clearer evidence to where the complainant uh, has met her burden to show that the horse clearly was unattended. Uh, there were passengers in the carriage at the time and the driver was standing behind the carriage. And regardless of whether there was a ranch hand or someone standing off to the side on the sidewalk, I don't think is relevant. Um, so I would find that there is a violation of 1254-285 Based on the uh, evidence presented, move that we find a violation of 1254-200-A-5, unattended, untethered horse. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. <coughs> I move in finding the violation of 1254-200-A-5 um, that we um, uh, I think we should consider something I don't know what you're considering or if you want to talk about it at, amongst this first but I'm just going to go with it right. if you guys don't like it just say no <laughs> I move in finding a violate that we found a violation of 1254-200-A-5 and um, uh, would ask for uh, probation uh, in uh, the amount of 60 days to be added on to the uh, additional ni the 90 days that already is there. And so not concurrent, but consecutive. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Mr. Fields? Uh, we do have one, one more complaint, and I, and I want to make sure you say, Ms. Lefkatcher, are you still present? Ms. Lefkatcher, is anyone here from the Nashville Animal Advocacy Program? They have a, they had a complaint that was separate, but since and they also have a second one for next month, so we can uh, we can take a look <coughs> whenever you decide to talk about what we didn't do today. I just I didn't want her to be present. 
Okay. I mean, be present with that recognition. Ms. Pruitt was here at the beginning. I don't. I don't. Sure. Yeah. Mr. Chair, you indicated that would be the. Yes, I think we need to. I think we need to wrap up for the day, and we can try to maybe schedule another meeting. Your your options, we can we can sort through, determine what is has not been heard, and watch the video a few extra times because we like to do that. And uh, we could, if you want to have a special meeting just to deal with these, we certainly can. We could roll them to the September meeting. I, I mean, to the October meeting. Um, it, it's, it's what is the on the agenda tentatively for October? Uh, at this point, there's nothing in particular on the agenda at this moment. There may be a there's there may be a complaint or two. We knew we had to roll that came in after the deadline for this month. Um, let me let me ask. I, I meant from a public hearing standpoint or we annual permits. Or, yeah. Then then yeah. I think if we can minimize additional meetings, it would make sense to just roll these roll to the October. October. that uh, the remaining complaints that were left on the agenda for today be deferred to the October meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. And I will also make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.